What? Uh, he... Like this? Mom, I told you, don't call me. I'll put here, okay? Can you make light a bit? I don't know, maybe they're Netflix, I don't know. Dude, make me a photo, I'll put it on Instagram, okay? Hey, I'm Jack, I'm Python developer here at So Nerdy. Hello, I'm Benjamin and I'm team lead here at So Nerdy. My name is Franklin, but I go with Storm. I'm doing Ruby here, yeah, senior software engineer Ruby. I'm doing hip hop, so check this out. What do you think your manager is doing at work? That's a good question. Hmm. Oh. Well, he's sometimes writing emails, meetings. One, this guy has not increased my salary. I fucking hate him. All the work doing we individual contributors. Yeah, like like real life, real talk. It's it's us. So 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 nerdy. There are lots of people on your team working hard every day. Your engineers are pushing code, product owners crafting new requirements and presentations, designers cooking up new design. But what about you? As a manager, your feedback loop is a bit longer. And you know what? That's okay. Don't stress. Hey there, I'm Dima Malev and I'm senior engineering manager at Agoda. I'm also a YouTuber, but it's mostly for Ukrainian audience. I've started this channel to speak about engineering management for engineering managers and show my passion about this profession. My goal is to share tools and knowledge which are gonna help you to crush it in your career and become a best engineering manager for your team. So I think we've gotten to know each other a bit. No need to repeat this information again. Now let's dive to more interesting topics. So, so, so nerdy. Why on earth do we even need engineering managers? Think of the engineering manager as a service provider with three main clients – your team, your boss and your company. Each of these clients has totally different needs and would probably require different skill set. When it comes to your team, your responsibilities are super broad. You'll be setting up development process, meeting with stakeholders and making sure that requirements are understood to your team. You'll hire and fire, you will be planning the budget and work, you will make sure that your engineers are growing and they are challenged enough and not bored at their working place. So you need to make sure that your team has everything they need to be successful in the company. These folks are real MVPs of your company. So you know, you are best manager and obviously best manager has best team. Now let's talk about your manager. This person also have a team and guess what, you are part of this team. Your manager probably oversees couple of more products or different directions of your company. So you're gonna be updating them with the status of your product, with the team health, you'll discuss your career growth and you'll try to understand what is company vision on different things. Here I would also like to add uh, managing stakeholders who are working with peers from the different teams. And of course there is your company. You'll always have tons of things needs to be done from the company side. And it starts from speaking on QBR and telling how great your team and what great achievements you've done. And and also ending up to make sure that everyone in your team pass security training which is required for yesterday. Almost all the time company have gaps or processes which are broken or they need to be established. And you know what does it mean for you? It means that there are like tons of opportunities which you can take and it gonna fast track your career. Yeah, fixing things at company level is like golden ticket for your promotion. But we'll dive into this in other videos. When I was an IC I was always thinking what's so complex in this profession. For better or worse, everything would make this profession tough, also making it super exciting. When it comes to main challenges, there are a couple that are really stand out. First, engineering management is all about people. Unlike individual contributor, where most of the things depends on you and your success is actually basically individual, uh, that's why we call it individual contributor, in case of engineering management, success of the manager depends on other people. And yeah, you always work with people and that's what makes this profession unique and interesting. 
people bring their personal life to work too. Someone might be dealing with a divorce, somebody can go through other personal problems and somebody just today in the morning had a fight with significant others because nobody bought a breakfast. As a manager, you need to consider all of the things while building a professional team which will deliver consistent results from this unique group of chaotic individuals. Second, the feedback loop is painfully long, especially if you was individual contributor just yesterday. As an IC, you can push the code and see changes in production sometime in matter of minutes, maybe hours. But as a manager, things moving in a totally different pace. As you move into management position, the changes you've implemented can take months just to show the result. And this feedback is crucial for you not only to celebrate results or show everyone how successful you are, but just to understand if changes you've made were good or bad. So yeah, sometimes you analyze the risk before making the decision, but sometimes it's just a leap of faith, which can go pretty different way. Third, there is no playbook how to be a software engineering manager. As an IC, you have tons of books how to write great code, what methodologies to use, what is architecture and blah blah blah. As a software engineering manager, you won't have that many books, though you'll have huge number of books about management itself. What is also interesting, every company sees the role of engineering manager super differently. So you'll need to adapt to a new team members, experiment with the ways how you are building your team and handle their daily challenges. In this profession, you really understand understand how unique every person is. Fourth, you are the bridge between your team and a company and your company and a team. On one hand, you need to communicate even weirdest decisions from the top management in the way that it's not demotivating your team. On other hand, on your level and level of your peers, you need to uh, make sure that decisions made there are in the best interests of your team. So yeah, you'll often find yourself fighting on both sides. Five. Grasping the last one took quite a lot for me, but it was quite an eye-opener. It's easy to be a good manager when everything is good. Company don't have problems with money, there are no layoffs, there are no changes of plans or difficult reorganizations. But great managers are defined by how they handle tough times. You can only tell if you are a good manager only during crisis. It's times when you need to deliver bad news about layoffs or reorganizational changes or changes of plans. Or maybe you need to announce everyone that compensation won't be increased this year, and all of that should be done with keeping productivity as high as possible. These are the real moments when you can prove yourself that you are a really good manager. Engineering management is tough, but super interesting profession, and I'm excited to deep dive about this profession with you on this channel. So hit the subscribe button, give a thumbs up, and see you soon. See ya! So, so, so nerdy.